Hi, my name is Seth Ladd and welcome to this episode of Dart Tips. Today we talk about constructors. Fun fact, you can build a constructor in Dart that controls which object instance is returned. There's lots of cool features with constructors in Dart, so let's get started. Constructors are responsible for building and returning an instance of a class. Let's start by looking at the constructors everyone is familiar with, what we call generative constructors. Here's an example. Not a lot of surprises here. The name of the constructor matches the name of the class, but whoa, there's a lot of repetition. The word name is repeated three times in the constructor alone. Surely we can do better, and indeed we can. Check this out. If the constructor's argument's name is the same as a field, you can prepend the argument with this dot. This is just syntactic sugar for the longer form this.name equals name and this.fluffiness equals fluffiness. Less typing is always a good thing. Use the new keyword to create a new instance of a class. Here's an example of calling constructor with arguments. A new instance of Fluffy Bunny is created with both name and fluffiness set. Of course, the last parameter, 0.72, isn't exactly obvious. Luckily, constructors can use optional parameters just like functions and methods. Here's an example. Now it's a bit easier to read and understand that last parameter. If your class does not explicitly define a constructor, a default constructor is provided for you. Here's an example of a point class with two fields and no explicit constructor. The default constructor has zero arguments and invokes the no argument constructor of its superclass. I now want to show you one of my favorite features of Dart, named constructors. First, some background. In traditionally statically typed languages, you can overload methods by the types of parameters passed to those methods. Because Dart is optionally typed, you can't overload methods based on type, which isn't a big deal because you can just create differently named methods. Traditionally, though, you were stuck with a single name for the constructor. The name of the class often had to match the name of the constructor and thus you wouldn't have been able to create multiple constructors. The designers of the Dart language realized this and introduced name constructors as a way to allow you to define multiple different constructors for a class. Here's an example of name constructors at work. Notice how the new keyword is still used. I really like name constructors because they provide an easy to read call site and they clearly state their intention. In this case, both constructors take a string and it's obvious how the strings will be used. One nice feature of the Dart language is that all final fields are fully initialized before the this handle is available. In other words, final fields must be set before the constructor body is run. To calculate and set the value of final field, you can use an initializer list. Here's an example. The initializers after the colon are the initializer list. The this handle is not available in the initializer list because at this point the object is not yet created. Here point is immutable because all fields are final. Setting x and y is straightforward. The distance from origin field must be calculated, but it is final, so we can't calculate it and set it in the constructor body. Because this isn't available in the initializer list, you can't call instance methods in the initializer list. However, top level functions like square root shown here and static methods are okay to use. Speaking of initializer list, we can now talk about calling superclass constructors. As you can see here, you can place the call to the superclasses constructor in the initializer list. It's important to understand that all field initializers are run before constructor bodies are run. This means that the constructor body of the superclass isn't run until all fields from both the subclass and the superclass are initialized. We recommend that you place the call to the superconstructor at the end of the initializer list to make the order more clear. If you don't explicitly call a superconstructor, a constructor will call the default noR constructor of its superclass. In this case, when you create a new fluffy bunny, you'll see in bunny and then in fluffy. If the superclass does not have a default noR constructor, you will need to explicitly call a constructor from the superclass. We've so far seen many examples of what we call generative constructors. These traditional constructors create a new instance of the surrounding class and return it. While familiar, generative constructors are a bit limiting. Modular and composable software applications require more flexible ways to build and return objects, and entire suites of design patterns have popped up to compensate for traditional constructor shortcomings. One popular pattern is the factory pattern, with examples in many frameworks or toolkits. However, without native language support for the factory pattern, most implementations have to implement it with combinations of static methods and or utility classes. While this works, it exposes the pattern to the consumers of the code. Luckily, the designers of Dart added the factory pattern right into the language. With Dart's factory constructors, you can natively use the factory pattern and make it appear like a regular constructor. One great use case for factory constructors is to return objects from a cache. Here's the code. Notice how the constructor is declared as a factory constructor. Inside the constructor body, the cache is checked, and if the symbol exists, it is returned. Else, a new symbol is created, added to the cache, and then returned. Using this class is easy because there's no special syntax to use a factory constructor. Get a new instance with new. 
both x and also x point to the same object, so they are identical. Because the user of the class doesn't know the constructor is really a factory, the original author of the code is free to refactor regular constructors into factory constructors without forcing clients to change their code. In other words, start with a generative constructor, and if you later change to a factory constructor, no one needs to know. Here's another cool fact about factory constructors. They can even return instances that are subclasses of the surrounding class. What other constructors can control what type of object is returned? I think that is very cool. So remember kids, while Dart might look like your friendly neighborhood structured language, it has productive features like terse field initialization, name constructors, and factory constructors. Thanks for watching. My name is Seth Ladd, and as we say here on Dart Tips, stay sharp. Click here to subscribe to our channel for more episodes of Dart Tips. We appreciate any thoughts you might have for the series. Please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any additional questions about Dart, please drop by Stack Overflow where Dart experts are standing by to help you out. See you next time.